Hello my little loves and welcome back to the Urban Butchery Channel with me Franco Macholaio. On today's show I'm going to be showing something really really special and really really important if you're going to be cutting vegetables, you're going to be cutting meat or just using a knife in general and that is how to sharpen your knife. So without further ado let's crack on with this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Butcher's Kitchen. As I said in the intro, what this video is all about is showing you guys how to sharpen a knife. Now there's lots of variations of this. Every butchery I've worked in, every butcher shop I've worked in, every butcher I've actually worked with have all got a little twist on this. So the way that I'm going to show you is as good as any and better than most. It's a very simple way of doing it but it assures you that you have a nice sharp knife whether you're cutting meat, you're cutting vegetables, you're cutting fish or just a general knife user. So what we have here, we have a commoner garden kitchen knife we have a Indian oil stone that's a rough side and the smooth side another beautiful stone here, very old this, this is a piece of slate and that's for finally or just finishing the knife off and put a very fine smooth edge on it. And last but not least, stone wise, we've got a diamond cut stone. We've got some kitchen olive oil, which the majority of people in the kitchens will have, and we've got a piece of paper to do the paper test. So guys, this is your Commoner Garden kitchen knife. It's one that I've been using on and off over the last two or three weeks. Um, I've got to say that the edge is starting to turn over. Now what I mean by that is, is that if you see the fine silver bead going along the edge of the blade there, what happens when that knife hits the table or falls on the floor or you might bang it when you put it in the sink or whatever, part of that edge will roll over and that's what starts to make your knife blunt. There are other reasons for it as well, as you see the back end of the knife is quite thick so what happens when this blade starts to wear down you get a very what we call a thick shoulder going along this part here and then you have to grind the knife down or keep it flat from the beginning as soon as you get it as a new knife I'd just like to do a little paper test for you so I've got a nice piece of paper here so I'm going to run the knife across it and as you can see it won't even cut paper so let's hope we have a better result after we've sharpened it, which I'm sure we will. So here we have our Indian oil stone, now I've turned the stone over to put it onto its rough side because I know that this edge on this uh, knife is really quite bad and firstly I want to show you how to, to start to get rid of this shoulder so that later on in the future you can still keep a nice edge even when it's going down through the knife. So you soak it in oil overnight and then place a rag around it to keep the oil in and then it keeps it all lubricated. Now we'll take the knife, make sure your hand's well out of the way when you're doing this and just spread the oil over the stone. Like I say, if you can prepare this the night before, all the better. So, what I'm going to say to do is to place the blade flat. Nice and flat. Now remember, what we're aiming to do here is to get rid of the shoulder first. That's what we're aiming to do, just for preparation for later on. So, we're going to move it up and down, like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then come off. And we're going to turn it onto the other side. Switch hands if you can. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and take it off. So what we do then, we then repeat that but we go to eight and you can see where the paint's coming off there, coming down to the metal. So down to eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Nice and steady. Remember where your fingers are from the point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what we do, we repeat that process, so we go from 10 to 8 to 6 to 4 to 2 and then down to 1. So every time you sharpen your knife, you do that process first and like I said, what will happen, it will just start to whir this down, this part, this shoulder part here. 
and then when we do come down here just doing the regular sharpening it'll be nice and flat for you so now we're going to concentrate on the edge of the knife now there's lots of different ways of doing this you can do it this way or that way or push down that way but like I said the way I'm going to show you is nice and simple and very effective so what we've got to do is find the angle now the angle is a very peculiar thing because if you was in butchery say for instance um, you was butchering beef then you would have a fatter edge on this because you're hitting bone all the time and this needs to be like really quite resilient when you're doing that if you're doing pork or lamb you could or your chicken for instance you could actually get away with a thinner a thinner edge on the end of there so let's just pretend that we're actually doing chicken or lamb or pork so we're looking for a nice fine edge all right now we've already got quite a nice silver bead going down there a nice silver line so we're going to follow that so there are various ways of doing this, you can say 90 degrees, 45 degrees, down to 22 degrees and it is roughly between 22 and 25 degrees that you want it really. So if you start like that, have it again and then that is roughly where you need to be. Another good way of actually seeing where you need to be is just look between the edge of the blade and the stone. Make sure there's no gap there, if there's no gap there you're roughly in the right area. So like we did the flattening part, we're moving forward, we're going to do exactly the same but we've got that slight angle on there now. So we're going to start with the point, so it's lifting it up, you see my hand lift up, so we've got to make sure that we get this point, if we, if we have it like this then the point is sticking up so we're going to miss that. So we start there, we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just like we did with the flattening, then we turn it over, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we do the same again. So this will be in real time. So that's eight. Just gonna have it in the right place. And that's eight. And then we go down to six. And then we go to six this side. Four. You got that nice swishing noise. Down to two. And then down to one. Down to one. Like that. Now, what we're looking for now, and this is quite dangerous, but you've got to be really careful when you do this, is that if you just take your nail and just rub your nail along that silver bead going along there. Now what you're trying to feel for is what they call a burr. Okay? And how it will feel is that your nail will catch and then you know you've got it. So I'm feeling along that now and I can't feel any burr on that side. Just a tiny little bit there. So if you feel a little bit of a burr, just go over that little bit until it's gone. And then you need to turn it over onto this side as well and with your right hand feel that side as well so now I'm just feeling the edge I don't advise you to do this with the thumb but obviously I've been a professional butcher for uh, 30 odd years so so I'm just feeling that again so what I'll do I'm just going to go down again make sure that that bear is away and that feels pretty good. I'm just going to turn the stone over, apply a little bit more oil and now I'm going to turn it this way around because really and ideally it would be better if it was this way around but I need to show you guys when you're looking through the camera so same again, 
but this time we're not flattening off, we're just concentrating on that silver bead. And then you turn in this way. And then down to eight. Eight again. Now I'm not putting too much pressure on this. And I'm keeping my eye on that gap between here and here and make sure that there is no gap. So Four now. It's two. And then just the one. Do the same again. Check with your nail. Be very careful when you're doing this. As I said before, check on the other side. You see we get a lovely silver bead going down there. That's telling me we've got a really good angle on there. And it's quite an even bead as you go down, same on that side. So that's feeling pretty sharp now. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this stone over. This is perfectly adequate for a kitchen or whatever, but I'll just show you to use the slate stone as well. Now this is a beautiful thing this, beautiful. This just gets rid of any little burrs that might be on there that you can't feel with your nail. And it just smooths the edge of that blade right out. So we'll just move that over again. And you'll here, virtually no sound when it's going over. Beautiful for uh, fish knives, this. So I'm just doing the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and down to eight. That's eight and so forth. So we're down to six. So this is real time now. Two, two, one, one. Now that, my little loves, is a sharp knife. Bring back the cloth, wipe your knife clean, always wipe it from the back, make sure you know where your fingers are. If you look down the edge of that blade you should be able to see that beautiful silver line going in there and here where the paint's worn away, where I've just started to wear the shoulder away here. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to use the butcher's steel, so we place Butt of the knife there, onto the end of the steel, keep our eyes on the end of the steel and then we just move the knife slowly down the blade. Now remember, you put a certain angle on this knife, so you need to keep the same angle when you're using the butcher's steel. So we're looking at 22 to 25 degrees, that's what we did. So we're looking for the same on the steel. Now generally you can tell by the sound, you hear that lovely swishing noise? And that's it. If anybody wants to know how to steal a knife, and I don't mean pinch it, then just go to one of my first videos and I'll give you full instructions on how to do that. So, we've now oil stormed the knife, we've used the butcher steel on the knife, so now we're going to do the paper test. And keep your fingers crossed. So here's the same piece of paper that we had at the beginning blue piece, so let's move it across, you can see, nice and sharp, and this paper to be honest is a little bit soggy as well, so as you can see, but when it gets to dry part, straight through, no issue. So there you have it guys, that's how you sharpen your knife on an oil stone. <laughs>